Hello all, so you've come back for part two to see that I'm not going to fail again. Well, it works this time. I'm going to go through the design process of making this thing and the errors I made and things I would certainly do different if I did it again, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to my desktop clock project which failed last time but now I've got some parts 3D printed I've already assembled the module so what we have here is a four-way max 7219 matrix without LED headers if you're not sure what I mean by that go and see the video which is appearing on the screen or in the description now um, I've 3D printed this top so this top is converting round red led matrices into squares but more importantly if you look this way it's curved you can see the curvature here and that's important because when i initially found this uh, i think it was a shampoo bottle i thought oh perfect size looks like it's going to have good transparency but I didn't think about the curvature. And when you put a standard flat LED matrix in there, the light sort of reflects off the inside a little bit. So my plan is now I've made this curvature the same curvature as that. So when it's inside, it's going to be uptight. So no light will get reflected, hopefully, because I haven't assembled this yet. It is live on air. Um, hopefully it will work. So all I've done is pre-prepared this. So I've soldered my connections onto these terminals, bit of heat shrink, a bit of hot glue, some hot glue to secure the cables. On the, uh, on the chip, I've used two strips of foam tape and then I pushed the, the D1 Mini onto that. And this glue is so stringy, it goes everywhere because I've only just done it. Um, but that wasn't strong enough to take it. So I put some hot glue around the chip. So now sort of, it's gluing the chip to the board, but the foam there is to make sure that the chip can't conduct onto the header pins of the matrix. So that should all work. Now what I haven't done is check whether it's gonna assemble properly. So my, I know it's gonna be tight because these these things they're not perfect they do go in and slide in but obviously i've now got to assemble it and slide in so the first thing i need to do i think is push my cord and it is a, a tight fit push my cord through the tube right so now i'm gonna now i'm going to put this on first i'm going to how did i design this this is going in the case this way so it is a quite a tight fit i made the top part sort of a, a tight fit onto that part but that may just need a bit of glue we'll see yes i think what i'm going to do off camera i'm going to put both of these on um this way yes is that gonna fit now this one's a bit tighter this side why is that not going in what have i done wrong mm. why is that not going in no that's fine a little bit tight on the wires so i think what i will do i will revise this model and notch this out a bit because i haven't allowed for the wires to come through um i hadn't allowed for them to be hot glued onto the back of the board i had allowed them you can see that it's angled here so it's sloping upwards so that was my allowance, but now I 
that should still work because the idea is the screen i.e. the printed matrix is going to be pressed again so i think what i will do i'm going to pause the video here for a second and get my hot glue and hot glue this onto the matrix so it doesn't fall off because i know when i push it in this tube that i've got to sort of get it half in get the cable in and then it's all going to fall apart so yeah let me pause here and i'll come back right i'm back so this is now looking more like a yeah like a project really so the hot glue has um gone off and it's really made it strong so what i'm hoping now is i can push it through the case and um assemble the damn thing so uh i think i'm going to take this out again now right so i'm going to try and push this how am i going to do i'm going to push that in there this is when you think about when you're doing it in cad it all looks good when you come to assemble something it's a lot more difficult because i've got to get this get this cable now through here and out and plug it in um right okay let's see if we can slide it in gently mm. that's not going to work because uh going to hit the cable i wanted the cable coming out the back so uh it's got to go past the cable. Yeah, that might be too tight. Yeah, I think I've I've made these fittings too tight. Let's try and slide it in from the other end. Hmm. I might have to do this off camera sliding it in, but I think my error in design is making making these hoops too tight fit into into the plastic. So um, let me come back. Okay, I'm back. So I have had to do some modifications. I've had to file down the uh, curves here. I've taken a little bit off this face and a little bit off this face. They or this one fitted too tight and now the way I designed these was I when I cut the end off this I I put it on my A3 scanner and I scanned it and drew around it and I made it too tight now that I'm assembling it if you make it smaller once it's inside the the tube you can always add a bit of hot glue between this and the tube to keep it there to rattle it round. I was thinking about this was going to be, you know, the be all and end all, the only way to secure it, but it's not. So, also, if you've drilled a hole in the back, uh, when I drilled this through with a step drill, it pushed swarf and had an upstand on the inside, which that would obviously stop these sliding through. So, uh, which is the left so that is going that way and that is in this way so on my matrix displays I always have the is that right on the right hand side yes I have this on the right hand side um, the the input so when you're soldering this yeah make sure you solder it on the input and not the output and obviously test it before you put it in i have tested it it does it does light up and it does work so i am going to push it through this way you can see now it slides in a lot nicer be careful not to trap your wires and once it's past the hole 
I can feed that through. Pull it back slightly. And hopefully <laughs> wiggle it in. So, yeah, I, I put the D1 Mini in the middle of the matrix. If you had it, if I had it one centimetre further up to one end, it would be easier to get this, uh, the cable in. So that needs to be twisted around. So quite a few design errors on this project, but you live and learn. Okay, that's that's in. <laughs> um, I think that's going to be all right for Hulk. I don't think that's going to come out. So I'm going to push that down now. Hopefully the hot glue is tight enough. In actual fact, also, point to note, Andy, next time you're doing it, if you're having the USB plug coming out the bottom, which I am, put the D1 Mini half a centimetre up. I put the D1 Mini in the middle of the matrix board and what happens now is is the usb cable is really rubbing on the case making it difficult to push through so usb out of center on the board away from the end they're going to push it in so away from the input and push the or make sure the usb plug is slightly higher and then it'll go in easier I'm not sure that's actually going to go in. That's going to be rubbing on there. Oh, Andy, this could be a design disaster. No, I think that's. Um, I think I'm going to get away a bit just. Happy days. So just push that down a bit more. And that's it, that's the matrix in. So yeah, the USB is you can just see it's slightly pushing there. Yeah, that's um that's not the best, but that's gonna do for revision one. So these end caps now should just push on as long as I, the inner hoops haven't distorted it too much because that was my plan hey, hey happy days that's it so actually when that's when that is sitting on the desk, although that red is showing up on the camera, I can barely see it. But yeah, don't don't use a red-ended um, <laughs> USB cord. So all I need to do now is plug it in and see what it looks like because I haven't seen it yet. So let me find my battery pack. So I did take it apart again. I didn't like the USB lead sticking downwards. So I've now stuck the, you can just see it there, the D1 Mini horizontally. And again, I, I'm limited by the length I made my cables. So if I do another one, I'm gonna make my cables a bit longer because um, it would have been easier. So the USB is in there. The, U, uh, the D1 Mini is at a slight angle, although the USB lead looks like it's straining, it's not. It's, it's in pretty straight because the ball's angled up. There's a generous amount of hot glue. As you can see, it's still going off, so I'm going to put it down. Holding the USB in, and I've got to sort something out here. This wasn't very well thought out, so... I'll probably fill it once it's in the case properly. I will probably fill it out with hot glue. I mean, the USB, if you put it, shouldn't come out because of, you know, there's a lot of glue around there and that's not going to move. 
So I'm going to give that five minutes to go off, push uh, the case in, which is now slides easier because the USB lead's not pushing down to the bottom. Put the end caps on and fire it up and see what we've got. So yeah, again to the exciting part. So I'll see you in a little while. Okay, let's power it up and see what we get. Connecting to USB on the computer. Should come up with the time pretty much straight away. So although that looks all blurry on the screen, that's giving me a nice display. Let me turn this light up to see whether that makes it better. Now I'm not sure about this number seven. I'm I'm gonna to have to look at the code. Oh, it's changed now. <laughs> gonna to have to look at the code to see why that's not continuous. Um, but that's working, so it logs on to an M NTP server, gets the time. You in code at the moment tell it how far in front or behind GMT you are and all it does it gives you the time now unlike some code on the internet this code will update properly so when the minutes go to zero so when the seconds go to zero the minute will update and then when the minute goes from 59 and it goes to zero zero the hour will update there's some code floating around where the minutes, the seconds go to 59, the minutes then update, and then the seconds goes to zero. It, it's really strange, but if you watch here, it does it properly. So that's it, that's Andy. I've got my desk clock at last. Stay tuned. Um, if you like this type of project, like and subscribe so you don't net, net, miss the next one. So this is just a basic clock, but we can, you know, make it show well time clocks, etc. Flash the date, but that's all in code. And in the next video for coding will be the code for this clock. So that's Andy at 1849 and 34 seconds saying good afternoon.